Hello, hello, I'm Zoe and welcome back to my channel Zoe's All Booked. If you're new here, welcome to the shit show and welcome to a brand new video. So today I'm going to be talking about books that took me more than one try to read. And if you've been around on my channel, if you know anything about me, you know that I don't DNF books. I have never DNF'd a book permanently. Some of these that I'm going to be talking about today, um, at least one, took me a year to actually finish and one I still have not come back around to to finish yet but I will because I unfortunately am a sufferer of a condition called nosy bitchitis. The main symptom of this condition is that I need to know how things end. I am truly at my core a nosy ass bitch and I just need to know how things end. I cannot rest until I know how a book, a movie, a tv show, anything, how it plays out. It's a sickness. I fear it's incurable, but that's, it is what it is, okay? It is what it is. I need to adjust here. Oh, so I've got five books. Let's just get right into these. Let me know if you've read any of these and if they've taken you multiple tries as well. These are in no particular order, just whatever, I, wherever I grab them off the shelves. First one is Chaos and Flame by Tessa Grattan and Justina Ireland. I finally finished it this year. Three tries, maybe? At least three possibly four. I just, every time I started reading this, because this was an arc that I had, it came out in 2023. Every time I sat down to try to read it, I just I fucking couldn't. I don't know. I don't know. Um, this is about um, an orphan set on revenge for the murder of her family and a war prince who despises battle. Um, they are sworn enemies that are bound by prophecy. Like, it sounded really, really good, but I just couldn't get into it. Probably because one of the main characters darling is one of the main characters names and i just i couldn't i couldn't get around it and i have the sequel that was kindly sent to me by uh, penguin team that with the help of an audiobook like with that one i'm gonna get through it quickly i'm really excited like i liked the book a lot which is i couldn't fucking do it darling was <laughs> darling was just a little stupid i couldn't even um, this next one is shocking to me because this is one of my favorite series, but like looking back, it kind of makes sense. The Dragonbone Chair by Tad Williams, a very, very shiny book. This book is before all the appendices, like the actual end of the book. It's 635 pages long, the first book. The second book, The Stone of Farewell, is a little bit shorter, 569. But the third book is just under 1,100 pages long. And I knew this going into it. I had gotten all three and I was very excited. I am not intimidated by big books. It's quite the opposite. Short books scare me because where's the world building? Where, where are the details? I don't, I don't know. But this one, it took me at least two tries to, to actually get through it with the audiobook too for the simple fact that this is a very 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 slow series if you are not into like extreme detail and very very meticulous world building and like all of the extras stay far away from the series if you're like me and you live for that shit definitely pick it up but just know that it's slow at the beginning um and like I was listening to the audiobook and I was getting so confused and I was so lost because I well, like I couldn't pay attention. I think it was mostly just like me in my headspace at the time because the second time I, I got into it, it was fantastic. This is a very long audiobook. Um, this one follows. I don't even I'm going to read the back so we don't we're not. You get me. You get me. A war fueled by the powers of dark sorcery is about to engulf the peaceful land of Austin Ard. For Prester John, the High King, lies dying. And with his death, the Storm King, the undead ruler of the elf-like city, seizes the chance to regain his lost realm through a pact with the newly ascended king. Knowing the consequences of this bargain, the king's the other... The other younger brother joins with a small scattered group of scholars the league of the scroll to confront the true danger threatening austin ard simon a kitchen boy from the royal castle unknowingly apprenticed to a member of this league will be sent on a quest that offers the only hope of salvation 
a deadly riddle concerning long-lost swords of power. Compelled by fate and perilous magics, he must leave the only home he's ever known and face enemies more terrifying than Austin Art has ever seen, even as the land itself begins to die. Like everything about that, riddles, long lost swords, we've got a, a young kid that doesn't know what the fuck's going on getting tossed into this. Like, I, I love all this shit. It was just really slow and really hard for me to get into at first. I think about that series several times a month. Am I going to reread it soon? 100%. Mostly because I have the first book in the next series, The Witchwood Crown. Um, this is the Last King of Austin Ard series. This one is a solid 700 pages for the first book. Oh, Carter woke up. He's upset. We're just going to blast through this because if I go in there right now, he's not going to be happy to see me. Next, we've got An Indiscreet Princess. This is the one that I still have not finished. This is an arc from 2022. I've started it at least four times. 2022. It's 2024. I'll get to it soon. I need the audiobook for this one too. So it's about Queen Victoria's most rebellious and artistically talented daughter, Princess Louise. She does not want to live the royal life and then she gets sucked back into it because of a near fatal accident. And it's just her life and her story. It was good. I liked the writing. I just, for some reason, again, could not get into it. I think this is the beginning of, um, like, me not being able to sit down and read a physical book to save my life. It's been several years that it's been a problem, and it's 100% a mix of ADHD, motherhood, and general brain fog. Also, I keep getting pregnant. <laughs> so, um, that's... I can't think when I'm pregnant. Um, next up is So Many Beginnings, the Little Women remix by Bethany C. Morrow. This one I got about halfway through and then I had to put it down and walk away because I started reading this when I had COVID. Talk about brain fog. I was, I was not okay. I started reading this um, right before I got COVID or while I had, I don't remember. This was this was May of 2022 that I read this because right after we recovered, I got pregnant with my youngest um, and he was born January 2023. So like I had to, I was, I was at least halfway through and I was not into it. I was, my camera was not into that apparently because it just fucking died. Um, anyways, I had to restart it by the end of like actually getting through all of it. It was okay. I think this one was kind of the book as well, uh, on top of the brain fog and the illness and whatever. Not my favorite writing. It's a really short book. I just, I typically like short books a lot less. I wanted much more from this than I got from it. I think the first time around, like a big part was just being sick and not being able to get through it. If I wasn't, I probably would have, would have gotten through it, um, in a day or two. But as it was, it took me at least two tries and it was just, it was an okay book. Nothing, nothing wrong with it. Just not really for me. And the last one here is the absolute definition of not for me, um, which was very, very upsetting at the time of reading it still now, because this one is A Wild Winter Swan by Gregory Maguire, the author of Wicked, one of my favorite books. So this one this really hurt. I started reading this October of 2021 or 2022. I can't remember which one. And I ended up finishing it an entire year later. It might have been 2022 and I finished in 2023. I'm saying 2020 a lot and I don't like that. So let's just move on. Almost exactly a year later after putting this down because it was so fucking boring. I picked it up. Like I was listening to the audiobook too. I tried the physical book. I tried the audiobook and the narrator's voice. I couldn't do it. I truly could not do it. Actually, let me, I need to look this up because this might've been the one where the audiobook was like award winning for his narration. And I just, I don't get it. <laughs> I, I, I really, really don't. Let me see here. Wild Winter Swan. Audiobook. Audiobook. Thank you. John McDonough. 
I think it, yeah, John McDonough. Yeah, a magical knack with children's stories. He, oh, he died in 2021. R.I.P. Anyways, I stopped to look something up and I don't remember what it was saying, but uh, the audiobook was just not it for me in any way, shape, or form. So naturally, a year later, I was like, I need to finish this book because I keep thinking about it. I keep wanting to know how it ends. Like, the book is just very, very boring, but it's so short, I can just do this. I can just sit down and, like, the font isn't that big. So I'm like, I could, I could just do it. Like, just fucking do it. But I couldn't do it. So I got the audiobook again. And the audiobook is very, very short. I'm pretty sure, um, because I listen to books at three times the speed on average, 3.5 if it goes up to that, like whatever app it is. The audiobook took me three hours to get through. At the end of the audiobook, there was like an interview with Gregory Maguire and a whole bunch of extra shit. And I was like, thank fuck that I don't actually have to listen to this for that much longer. Because the ending was so stupid. The whole book was just so... Not... Not good. I didn't like it at all, okay? Like, I was so upset because, like I said, Wicked is one of my favorite books. I was going into this expecting a new favorite. And I got quite the opposite. And I'm annoyed that it took me a year to finish it, and I wish I just did it in the first try. But I didn't. So here we are, annoyed. And that brings me to the end of the list. And now I'm annoyed. So I'm going to take a little chai break. And everything's going to be better. Yeah, I don't think I have any more books, actually. Like, I was like, I'm going to do five because that's, you know, that's nice and compact. But I don't know if I actually have any more books that took me more than one try to read like this. Do I? No, I don't think so. I mean, I probably will as, you know, time goes on, as things happen, as I read new books. But for right now, those are the five that I just, I couldn't get with it. And most people that I come across that I know that I've encountered on the Booktornet yell at me and tell me to DNF books. But again, as a sufferer of nosy bitchitis, I just truly, truly cannot. I think it's a superpower for people to just be able to put a book down and walk away and never think about it again, and they're just done with it. Couldn't be me. Truly could not. As we can see, I've tried. I have tried to not do that. But it just happens. It just, it haunts me. My cat was staring at me when I said that, so I'm a little concerned for my safety at this point. But yeah, like... Oh, I see another one. I lied. This one, To Best the Boys by Mary Weber. I've gotten about 50 pages into this one a few times, but without the audiobook. So we'll try it again. Well, it's still on my TBR shelf. So is an, ind an indiscreet princess. We'll get there. Once again, let me know if you are the type to DNF a book, to just move on, whatever. If you are a sufferer of nosy bitchitis like me, and if you want me to go through and see if I actually do have other ones, um, if you're curious. Because I, I don't fucking know. I don't know off the top of my head. I Literally that one, I just looked at it. So that's why we added that one. Or if that's just too much or you don't have a lot of time, drop some hearts down below, preferably purple ones, because that's my favorite color. As always, to stay updated with my current reads and how I'm feeling about them, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, TikTok, Storygraph, and Threads, all at Zoe's All Booked, which I will leave linked down below in the description box. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share the video so everyone else can join in on the madness, the chaos, the shit show. With that, we have come to the very end of the video. I hope you all have a wonderful day and get at least a little bit of uninterrupted reading time. I love you awesome nerds, and I will see you in the next one. And none of the children are crying anymore, so they went back to sleep. Go team.